all right guys welcome back to another video on the exam objective and now uh, we are working on exam objective 3.0 which is implementation we already uh covered um 1.0 which is attack threat uh and vulnerabilities and also uh 2.0 which is architecture and design and now guys we are now in implementation all right implementation makes up 25 percent of the exam well, this is what we'll be working on um the exam objective 3.0 implementation um 3.1 implementing secure protocols and then we have uh, implementing a host or application security solutions um implementing secure network design we have uh installing and configuring wireless security settings implementing secure mobile solution applying cybersecurity solution to the cloud, implementing authentication and authorization solutions, and implementing public key infrastructure. All right, guys, so let's just get started with uh, 3.0 uh, um, SY601 exam objective 3.0 implementing secure protocol. All right, guys, so let's get started with the first question. All right, what is a secure protocol? What is it? Okay, so um a cryptographic protocol or encryption protocol is an abstract of a protocol that performs a security related function and applies cryptographic methods often as sequences and cryptographic primitives all right this is exactly what a secure protocol is so now uh let's just go to uh, the next one how does ssh help secure connections ssh is secure shell all right so let's go to the answer ssh uses encryption to ensure of information between the host and the client host refers to the remote server you are trying to access and the client is the computer you are using to access the host all right again host refers to the remote server you are trying to access and the client is the computer you are using to access the host all right question three now what cryptography method does SMIME use? You guys know SMIME is related to email, right? So SMIME based on asymmetric cryptography, which uses a pair of mathematical related keys to operate a public key, a private key. All right, so uh, let's go to uh, number, th uh, number four now. All right, four. Secure real-time transport protocol uses which cipher by default? Okay, um, SRTP and SRTCP use the advanced encryption standard AES as the default cipher. All right, number five, LDAP-S is secure version of LDAP that is used to communicate with Active Directory. What TCP port does LDAP-S over SSL TLS use? All right, let's go to the answer. All right, you can enable LDAP-S by installing a properly formatted certificate from a certificate authority, CA, according to the guidelines. LDAP-S over SSL TLS uses TCP port 636. All right. All right, guys. So now we are done with uh, 3.1. We just uh, covered implementing a uh, CQ protocols. And now let's just go and put a check mark in the next uh, one we are working on now. We're going to be implementing hosts or application security solutions. Okay, so now we are moving to um, 2.2 um, SY601 exam objectives 3.2, which is implementing hosts or applications security solutions all right so let's just move to uh just go to the first question what are the three strategies that anti-malware software use to protect system from malicious software okay so um right anti-malware software uses signature based detection behavior based detection and sandboxing important question guys so let's go to uh the next uh question number two what is the first step toward achieving a trusted infrastructure on computers and network devices? All right. Uh, boot integrity refers to uh, using a secure method to boot a system and verify the integrity of the operating system and loading mechanism. 
Boot Integrity represents the first step toward achieving a trusted infrastructure. All right, that answers the question. Um, well, now we are moving to number three, question three now. In boot attestation, what is measured and committed during the boot process? By right, input at the station, software integrity measurements are immediately committed to during boot, thus relaxing the traditional requirement for secure storage. Okay, so we are now going to number four, question four. All right, question four now. What places an exterior guard on the internal contents of a device? All right. Uh, Full disk encryption FDE is a cryptographic method that applies encryption to the entire hard drive, including data, files, operating system, and software programs. FDE encryption places an exterior guard on the internal contents of the device. All right, so now we are going to the last, the very last question, uh, which is uh, question five. Right, question five now. What aspect of a disk array requires that replacement drives be configured to match the encryption protection at installation? Okay, um, self-encrypting drives, SEDs, are disk drives that use an encryption key to secure the data stored on the disk. This encryption protects the data and array from data theft when a drive is removed from the array. Because SED operates uh, across all disks in an array at once, the drive must be configured as an SED when introduced to the array. All right, guys, that's it for uh, 3.2. We just covered 3.2, which is implementing house or application security solutions. Let's just go ahead and put a check mark. And next uh, time, we will be working on implementing secure network design. All right, guys. All right. I hope you guys enjoy that session. And also, if you have any comment, go ahead. Feel free to leave your comment um, in the comment section below uh, the video. And guys, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and also click on the bell for notifications so you will never miss any of my video. I'll see you next time for the next video.